All right, questions. When was the last time you saw or spoke to Sam? It's been ages, I can't even remember. The bartender here recalls Sam complaining about arguments with his sister. I don't know what to say, maybe he dwelled on the past when he was in his cuffs. We certainly argued enough when we were younger. Where were you on the night of Sam's murder? I will overlook the implied accusation and tell you that I was at a fundraiser all evening. A very crowded fundraiser. Did Sam have any enemies? Sam's biggest enemy was Sam. I don't know of any others. You would likely know better than me these days. Were you and your brother close? You think I've made my feelings? I think I've made my feelings about Sam pretty clear, don't you? You don't seem to care whether his killer faces justice. Of course I want justice. I just can't let this drag me down again. Show her the picture of her and Sam as children. Jessica takes the photo from you guardedly, as if it might be, as it might sting her. But that guard drops the moment she looks at it. Where did you find this? Sam's bunk? It smelled like booze. I can't believe he kept this. It was one of the few possessions he had. She studies the old photo for several silent moments. What happened between the two of you? Things were different back then. We were different. We were a family. Then after our father died, things began to change, and we couldn't get back to a new normal. With our dad around, there was always a reassuring order to our lives, but after, everything got mixed up. You can never really appreciate the importance of a person in your life until they're gone. The remorse plays wet across her eyes, and it seems that she's not just talking about her father. Jessica then steals herself to tell the rest. Sam tried to be the man of the house. He truly did, but he couldn't handle it, and pretty soon he had spent every dime of our father's life insurance. Every dime. After that was gone, with Mom working two, three jobs, he spent all her money, too. I couldn't stand the way he abused her trust, so finally, I just had to leave. She holds the photo forward, one part of her ready to relinquish it, along with the past, and another looking to hold on to both. May I keep this? Uh, sure, I got what I needed from it. Thank you. Tell me about your mother and her death. She was a devout Catholic. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that she sacrificed her life for Sam and me. But she turned a blind eye to what Sam was becoming, refused to acknowledge his downward slide. I couldn't watch her do it anymore, and so I moved out. After I left, we drifted further and further apart. I wasn't here when she died. In fact, I didn't even know about it until I returned to Seattle five months ago. Where were you living before you moved back here? Cal Free. Oh, the California Free States. Look at this fucking world traveler. What brought you down there? It was less of what brought me there than what made me leave here. I felt lost in Seattle, so I moved to California to see if I could find myself. And did you? Actually, yes. While I was there, I developed a whole new outlook on life, a vision for what the world could become, and I came back here to make it happen. I've taken up enough of your time, crazy talk. Just as well, I need to get back to the office. But before I go, you should know that I'm re-entering my, re my mother's body tomorrow, and I'm arranging to have Sam buried with her. The funeral is tomorrow at Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament, 7 o'clock. You're more than welcome to attend. I might swing by. Goodbye, Phineas Irk. I hope you find what you're looking for. Stay safe. Objective complete. Talk to Jessica. I got some karma out of the deal. You fuck it, it's that person I'm never working with again. Coyote's wiping down the back bar. She doesn't stop when you approach. Keeps her eyes on her work. Hey. What's going on? Afternoon checklist. Gotta get the back bar ready for tonight. Listen, Phineas. I don't want to talk about what happened with Gino, okay? What's done is done. Gino's dead. I'm alive. And that's all there is to it. It's the Barons, right? Nothing more to do or say. I'm gonna be looking for work. Your kind of work. If something comes up, keep me in mind. Uh, no, we won't. We won't see. Because you're unreliable. And you're trouble. I'm fine, and a job will help get my mind off things. Anyway, just keep me in mind. I gotta go do this now. The afternoon checklist is gonna finish itself. That's fucking... Unless they force her on me. Fuck that person. Glad to see you well, Phineas Irk. And you, Mr. Clue, holding down the fort. As always, though people are more on edge than usual. Word got around about the latest Ripper killing, and people aren't feeling safe. And when people feel unsafe, they either go to ground or they huddle up. You notice how empty the streets are these days? That's because everyone's either locked in their squats, pulled up in places like this, or seeking refuge at the nearest Universal Brotherhood chapter house. Safety in numbers, Chummer. Not that we need numbers here, I got it covered. Man, your size covers a lot. Take care, big guy. Later. There's our friend, Mr. Delilah. 
If you're talking to me, there is business to transact, am I right? It's always business with me. I appreciate this about you. Street talk is that you're a dangerous individual. What can I do for you, dangerous individual? I need to put a crew together. You got scratch? Are you planning to pay me out of your earnings? How much is this going to cost me? Well, for your speed, hired help will run you about 1200 a head. You start taking on tougher jobs, well, the more experienced the runner, the higher the rates. Uh, I can pay up front. Excellent. We agree on terms. I've got some runners on call if you've got any special requests. I've got some stuff to take care of first. Need some fetishes, maybe a... Ah, I really don't want a new shotgun. I'm really regretting spread myself too thin on skills. Oh, what do you got there, Dr. Castle? Dr. Castle glances up only briefly from her sharps. Her impish friend, on the other hand, tracks her every move like some sort of humanoid raptor with a mouse under its shadow. Live to see another day, have you? Just a pit stop, Doc. Night's not over yet. I suppose it's night like these that enjoy a plenty of work come morning. Granted, a repeat customer means a person courting death more often than any good doctor should condone. But I don't suppose I can dissuade you from your course of action. If only life was so simple. Very well, let's talk about how I can help ensure you make it back alive in one piece. How'd you fall in with this operation anyway, Doc? Dr. Castle pauses her work, setting down her tablet and appearing to grow introspective. I suppose you might expect that I had a fall from grace. Certainly that is the case with many of my peers. If not that, you might think that I was compelled to do this because a friend or family member became a Shadowrunner. I hurried to their assistance one fateful night. But the reality is that I grew up knowing this is what I would do with my life. My parents were both Shadowrunners and very successful ones at that. So successful that they retired in a very large house and raised a litter of kids who grew up hearing the impossible tales of their parents' younger years. Of course, we were expressly forbidden to follow in their footsteps. We were all expected to attend university and take full advantage of the opportunities. They had thoughts hard to give us. I think I said opportunities twice. So mom and dad were proud to see me pursuing a medical degree, and they had only minor reservations about me applying that expertise to the treatment of Shadowrunners. After all, they never would have survived long enough to meet and fall in love if not for the ministrations of several street docs along the way. So I suppose you could say I was born into this life after a fashion. Ah, uh, there's nothing else for us to talk about. Eric Mersman, you got any new clothes for me? Eric Mersman? I'll take a look at your clothes. That's it, eh? So have any fucking new little stuff for me. Let's see what you've got. A consumables. It summons a force to air elemental deal. And one earth, and one fire, and one water. Confirm! These grenades have not helped me at all. Force to fire, force to water, welcome aboard. Okay. Maybe Gruberman has a gun I'll regret buying. The orc stands at attention and looks every bit like he's waiting for a commanding officer who he can crisply salute. He appears at ease when he's cleaning the barrel of a rifle or counting out the bullets in a magazine. The rest of the time he appears as he is now. Ramrod straight and prime for anything. How are you, my friend? Fine day to fire a weapon. What say you? Tell me a little about yourself, Buster. Were you military? After a fashion, yes, sir. Sergeant of the 31st California Militia. It's no longer a recognized union, and unit and there are those who would say we never were, but someone had to stand up to the tier and it fell to us. Tier 10 guy? Yes, sir. I was in Calfrey when the elves came marching down from the north in 36. After the UCAS pulled their support, we had little in the ways of an organized defense, but what we did have was a stockpile of weapons and ammo down in Oakland. The locals in NoCal held out long enough for us to bring the heat. I tell you, all the magic hoo-ha in the world ended up to stop a V11 hot rock from cracking your dome. 
We drove the elves all the way back to the Eureka. Could have pushed them all the way back to Portland, too. But some ninny down south reached out to the Japanese freight and we got our own version of Normandy for the trouble. Things went to hell in a handbasket from there. Don't much like to talk about that those later days. So let's talk guns instead. What do you got? Yeah, I don't want any of this stuff. No, sir. See you later. Well, that just gives us more money for Shadowrunners. Mr. Delilah? You ready to do business now? I can have that runner crew on site as soon as I've got the new unit. I'm ready to go. Let's see them. Alright, who are we bringing? We can bring two more. Oh, look at all these people! Dwarf Shaman I already have. An Elf Samurai? Well, let's fucking go to the top. H2O, Human Adept. Too much of anything is dangerous. The key to perfection is a balance of mind and body. That's fair. Graf Faust. For offense, hurt them where they're vulnerable. For defense, get out of the way. Shiny Bit, the Troll Decker. Size don't matter in the Matrix. Only skills and brains. Human Decker. Hip... What the... Hip... Hypotenuse. Oh, I see. I see what you did there, fella. You tricked me. The Matrix is dumb, it does exactly what you tell it to, but it tells us its secrets. Verbane of V, Elf Mage, Queen of Fear, and Empress of Pain. She'll make them wish they had better defenses. Galloglass, Human Mage. Want someone that can build you up while tearing your enemies down? No problem. Corky Ronson, the Dwarf Rigger. Best gearhead this side of UCAS. Doesn't just sit in the rig, flying drones, so ka. Dreadlock, Troll Rigger, it's not the size of the drones, it's the will of the rigger. Johnny Boy Elf Samurai, rule one, get a weapon, rule two, load it, rule three, kill every last fragment one of them. Full Monty, Troll Samurai, loves to squish things smaller than he is. Bonus fun is killing things larger too. Welcome aboard, my friend. Tames the air, Orc Shaman. Spirits live, the trick is to convince them that they want what you offer. Tusser, Dwarf Shaman. Well, I already have a Shaman, so we... What do we have? We have Samurai, another Shaman. We need a Decker. Shiny Bit or Hypotenuse? Hypotenuse tricked me, which means he's smart. Confirm. Hire these runners and meet Shannon at the NTSB warehouse? Fucking, we're on our way. You return to the docks to meet Shannon Halfsky, although the Ripper's latest victim was her brother. But Shannon appears cool and professional. A consummate runner by birth, if not by trade. She'll get the job done, and hopefully, one of the hearth spirits in this place can point you towards the Ripper. Dealing with spirits can be tricky business, but when they deliver, it's pure platinum. One doesn't have to be an Amerindian shaman to summon and control spirits. Anyone with magic talent can do it, but Shannon seems to have a particular connection to the spirit world. As you approach the gate, you know something's not right. The dock's already strange and uncomfortable at night. Trigger the need for caution. And then you see it. The guards are missing and the gate's been smashed in. Shit just got real. What should we bring? That will be fine. Which is something I'll regret in a few minutes. You have karma available to improve your character. Well, fuck, apparently I really need to spend this karma determines how far a grenade can be thrown. What determines how much shit I can carry? Ah, no, no, no. I don't want to get hit. That's the trick. Spirit summoning can summon two spirits at the same point. Increases the chance for a shaman to maintain control of a summoned spirit. Do that. Except... Do you feed off spirit summoning? Yes, you do. Confirm. Alright. Crew? About time you showed up. Looks like we weren't the only ones who wanted to take advantage of the situation. A 
bunch of mercs have locked down the area. I don't think they're here for us, though. My guess is there's something worth a bit of coin left in that warehouse. Damn, I was hoping this would be a milk run fucking after that horseshit coyote put me through. Me too. Figured we'd just have to sneak past a few Lone Star sentries. But I saw at least four mercs out there with bigger guns than Lone Star carries. New objective, keep Shannon alive. Oh, he doesn't look so tough. Huh? You there, this block is off limits. There's, uh, we've got a gas leak on the docks here, no loitering. This guy doesn't look like one of the hired mercenaries. Hey, are you even listening? Oh, fucking Christ, I picked the wrong etiquettes. I'm not here for you, just let me through. Look, I, I don't want to have to do this, fella. you made me do? Why do you make me do it? Just weaken his armor. Can you make that shot? What about you? Hypotenuse. Light him up for me. Oh! You fucking, you can hear that last one connect. Okay. Nicely done, everybody. Some dead Lone Star up here. Right? Yeah, that looks like Lone Star. Let's look for treasure. What kind of self-respecting Shadowrunner doesn't look for treasure? There's no treasure out here. Although, there's some enemies here. They don't secure the area. It's the fucking mercenaries. He is way too close. Fire elemental. Get out here now. but that's okay. Mana Bolt. <laughs> Shane in half, Sky. Fucking, why can no one score a hit? 80%, go. God damn it, that's not what 80% means. Holy shit. Now this guy's got some skills. There you go. Here, what we got here? Mark target marks enemy, causing them to become easier to hit. That is gonna come in handy. End turn. Man. He is not running away for a couple turns. Do -do -do -do. Holy f Oh, Nelly. Should have brought a grenade or something. Now, don't run. This is really important. What is this? 
on this man. Banish spirit, do not do that. Holy shit, don't do that. If anything, I want you to go over there and go rogue and then kill them all. Unless they come specifically after me when they go rogue, I honestly don't know. Hypotenuse, kill shot please. Ooh, he has treasure! Cover. Man, that guy does not miss. Amazing skills. And he has some boom boom. Light him up. But you, you fucking, you hide, Phineas. Shannon, you have magic powers, don't you? Force 2 nature elemental fetish. We'll hang on to those just in case. Oh, there you go. And turn. Whoa! That's good, though. Shoot the imaginary magic monster instead of my men. 26% chance to run. Oh, he's run no matter what. No, no. He still belongs to me. Perfect. Done. Monty, can you make that shot? Holy shit, Monty! Do you miss? Is that something that you're capable of? As soon as the last murk hits the ground, the docks become eerily silent. 